Tomorrow, Ava and I are flying to Italy. That's right, the next time you see us will be from there. But in the meantime today, because we're leaving town, our fridge is looking a little bare. However, I've done some inventory and it looks like we have some eggs, some pecorino cheese, some guanciale, even some rigatoni. And this can only mean one thing. What thing, Captain? You know, we've got eggs, guanciale, pecorino, rigatoni. Does that ring any bells of a classic Roman pasta dish? Which classic Roman pasta dish? Carbonara. This is the problem with carbonara. Everyone thinks that carbonara is the only pasta dish that they cook in Rome. They have a lot of amazing pasta dishes in Rome, including some pasta dishes that use the same ingredient of a carbonara. Okay, so how about instead today, you show me some of those pasta dishes and we see if any of them are worthy of a carbonara lover like me? Die, Harper! The first Roman pasta dish that I'm going to cook use the same ingredients of a carbonara plus other few ingredients that I need to add. I will need onion, tomatoes, and sausages. Oh, so this is like a lighter, healthier version of carbonara. <laughs> Every time that you use one chale to make a carbonara or another pasta dish that requires one chale, be sure to trim this, uh, this part, the, the skin. The skin. After the onion is sauté for two or three minutes, uh, you need to add your guanciale and wait for another two or three minutes until the guanciale starts to heat up a little bit. So far, this sauce seems like if you asked me to invent a pasta sauce. Sausage, guanciale, onion, and tomatoes. These are a few of my favorite things. But Harper, wait a moment because we are not done yet. can be also one of my favorite sauces. It's very well al dente, so I'm going to transfer the pasta in the sauce and cook it for another two minutes. We can add the eggs, but before, turn off. I haven't even tasted this yet, and I already know it's going to be quite a plate of pasta. Harper, in front of you, you have the famous, maybe not so famous, at least outside of Italy. But this is called the pasta alla zozzona. 
Now, tsotsu means dirty. Dirty? Yes, but dirty, in this case, tsotsu now because it's a very rich, heavy, fat pasta dish. It's dirty. You see, like... <laughs> Is rigatoni the go-to pasta shape, or can you do it with others? No, rigatoni is the most classical pasta shape to use with uh, tzotzona. But then, if you don't have rigatoni and you want to use penne, yes. For sure, you don't do spaghetti alla tzotzona, because it needs to be a pasta that is uh, tzotza. Buon appetito! <laughs> wow, dang. Yeah, okay. I didn't get the name. Until now. Now you understand. Now I get the name. Let's go pasta la tzotzona. If you try this pasta, you will understand why it's a dirty pasta. Mm. It truly is like just a ton of things that I love put into one pasta dish. Guanciale. Guanciale, sausage, tomato sauce, pecorino cheese. I love the egg sauce of carbonara. It's just all in there. <laughs> Uh, this is like uh, the wedding between Amatriciana and Carbonara plus something else. This is a funny plate of pasta too, because do you remember that New York Times thing? I know. A few years ago, I guess? No, a few months ago. Was it a few months ago? A few months ago. The New York Times released a recipe where they shockingly made a carbonara, but they added tomato sauce into it. And of course, Italians were up in arms about it. The problem isn't that they think it tastes bad. The problem is that you've taken their dish that already exists for them and just called it by another dish. You call this, I don't know, a matriciana plus egg or a carbonara plus tomatoes. No, it's pasta alla zozzona. I invented a new kind of burger, except the meat is sort of long and sausage-like, and it's on an extra long bun, and we put uh, mustard on it. It's not that a hot dog's bad, but if you, if I order a burger and you give me a hot dog, I'm gonna have some issues. Now, the only question is, if I had this and a carbonara in front of me, which would I go for? Right now I'm leaning towards this, but that's because this one is actually in front of me <laughs> instead of theoretically. Maybe the only thing that this lacks compared to a carbonara is sort of that beautiful simplicity. This is a little bit more complicated, more ingredients, and there's something really very just beautiful about the simplicity of carbonara. You think this is just better, don't you? <laughs> now, don't get me wrong, I love carbonara. But you know that uh, I'm more a matriciana lover. That's true, you need your tomatoes. For me, this uh, tastes better than a carbonara. But in Rome, they don't have just pasta alla zuzzona. No? Can they have no. more of pasta alla zuzzona? <laughs> right here, right now? He fall in love with pasta alla zuzzona. This is really good. <laughs> He's falling in love with pasta <laughs> They have other pastas out there that maybe they deserve to be known as a tzotzon. Before we continue, a quick word about today's video's sponsor, Masterworks. Some of the best pasta dishes were born out of poverty. Italian cooks had to get creative with their food, and they invented some of the classics we know and love today. That's a nice silver lining, but we hope that people are eating pasta because it's delicious and yummy, not out of necessity because it's cheap filling and has a long shelf life. It's hard not to engage in our own cucina povera when we're experiencing a historically bad economic year. Even among Americans making six figures, over half of them reported living paycheck to paycheck. We're not financial planners, but like everyone else, we want to invest our money somewhere where it'll be safe, hopefully grow, and despite the poor recent outlook, one market still had a record-breaking year, even in 2022. A market that normal people like you and me can now access in minutes without needing millions of dollars like you did in the past. And that's thanks to Masterworks' art investing platform. With Masterworks, you can buy shares in works of fine art. The value of fine art tends not to correlate with other investments. So when the rest of the economy is not doing great, Fine art can be doing extraordinarily well, as it is right now. Masterworks has sold over $45 million of fine art, with the proceeds going directly to investors. And that's not a one-off. Every Masterworks exit to date has returned a profit. With over 700,000 users, Masterworks offerings have sold out in minutes. They had to start a wait list for new users, but you can skip the line as a pasta grammarian. Click the link down in the description below and you'll get special access and can start investing in fine art today. A big thank you to Masterworks for sponsoring today's video. 
The second hidden Roman gem requires egg fresh pasta. So we are going to make some fettuccine. For the sauce, this time we are going to use eggs, butter, peas, onion, some uh, prosciutto crudo, and parmigiano reggiano. Are you sure you're not making Gordon Ramsay's carbonara? Actually, you know what, Alpe? In my opinion, Gordon Ramsay inspired, was inspired by this dish that isn't a carbonara, but it's a real dish. prosciutto crudo as uh, the original recipe requires. If you don't have prosciutto crudo, and prosciutto crudo is what here in America you call just a simple prosciutto, you can use also prosciutto cotto, which here in America is known as ham. Gordon, this is for you, some fresh frozen peas. It legitimately feels like you're trying to cook a bad carbonara right now. <laughs> I know, I feel that I'm doing the Gordon Ramsay carbonara, yes, I know. And now, like a carbonara, we turn off the heat and we mix in the egg. The only thing we're missing is the heavy cream. Actually, I prefer there are people who make uh, like a variation or another version of this same pasta dish with a Really? See. Si. Now we did we did a whole video once on the history of carbonara, but I wonder if there's some undiscovered chapter where actually this was the inspiration behind the Americanized carbonara because it's like it's every carbonara mistake. It's like using fresh pasta not using guanciale, using peas, apparently using heavy cream. Maybe someone from America went to Italy, went to Rome, had this pasta dish, didn't remember the name, but because it has egg in it, they, they said, okay, you know what, I hate a carbonara. So from that moment, they decided that this is a new face of carbonara. Speaking of which, what is this called? This is called fettuccine alla papalina. Papalina? Yes, which means uh, in the style of the Pope. Pope's pasta. It's a Pope's pasta, so it's a blessed pasta. Buon appetito. It actually doesn't taste a lot like for instance, Gordon Ramsay's carbonara. It has nothing to do with Gordon Ramsay. It really Ramsay. doesn't. I thought it would be a little bit more similar. It is a very delicate taste. You know what would ruin that delicate taste? A cup of sour cream. 
a nice spoon of creme fraiche. Of course, milk is fine, but it just stops the whole mixture going dry. And now I want to start a war with my Italian friends. Please forgive me, but in my opinion, pasta alla papalina tastes better than a carbonara. Really? I love it. Wow. Much, much better than a carbonara for me. That is a very interesting plate of pasta. I'm still really fascinated about the history behind it and the possibilities there, but that's maybe a conversation for another day. I'm enjoying these carbonara alternatives. You got one more? The ingredients for this pasta dish are the same of carbonara except one. We are going to use rigatoni, we are going to use guanciale, pecorino, we missed the egg, but we are going to substitute it with some ricotta. For the first time today, it has smelled like deep carbonara in here. Now it's smelling like carbonara. Are you intentionally cutting the guanciale so that it is the perfect size to fit into a rigatono? A rigatone! A rigatone? A rigatono. But it's rigatoni. Rigatoni, but rigatone. Like uh, cane, cane. Oh, and now you're cutting them. Yes. Just, just to punish me. Si, so you rigatono. <laughs> Why are you cutting them? I don't know, because uh, I saw them too, <laughs> too long. <laughs> I don't like. I'm taking aside uh, two, three, four pieces of guanciale just for garnish the dish at the end. But believe me, this is really optional. The only way to know if we need more cheese or not uh, is just to try it. And guess what, Harper? I'm gonna guess you need more cheese. Well, you know what a ricotta fiend I am. <laughs> I have a feeling you saved this for last for a reason. Harper, this is called pasta alla pecorara. Now, in Italy there are three versions of pasta alla pecorara. One from Abruzzo, one from Calabria, and one from Lazio and Rome. It's basically a carbonara, but with ricotta instead of egg. And it can't be bad. I'm pretty sure it can't be bad. It can't be bad. Well, let's try it. Buon appetito. Okay. I told you that it couldn't be bad. Though. It's more than not bad. As you know, I lived for eight years of my life in Rome. So I was so lucky that I could go outside and eat in carbonara, matriciana, and sozzone, and papalina, everything that I wanted. But you know which was my favorite pasta dish from Roma? This. This. In my opinion, pasta alla pecorara with all the rest of the Roman pasta. Wow. I'm a ricotta fanatic. You might not be. However, I absolutely prefer that to carbonara. And I love carbonara. The taste is incredible. It has all of the simple beauty of a carbonara. It's actually easier to make now that I think about it. But it's also here maybe in America a little bit difficult because you really need a very good ricotta. That's true, yeah. In fact, we have a video up here where um, you can learn how to make real ricotta. No, that recipe you found that uses lemon juice, that's not real ricotta, stop it. The guanciale gave that 
um, strong flavor, that mm -hmm. pinch. Punch. Punch. It's a little pinch more than salt. a pinch. Pinch of salt, punch of flavor. Yes, I know, I learned that. But the main ingredients here is the ricotta. So if the ricotta is good, your plate of pasta will be amazing. Would they use, because it's pecorata, pecora meaning sheep, would they use sheep ricotta? They use Roman sheep ricotta. Ooh. Okay, next time we go to Rome, might have to search this out, the real deal in Rome. Speaking of which, that's where we're gonna be next, as I said at the beginning of the video. So stay tuned and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. We'll see you soon from the boot. Wish us buon viaggio. Buon, buon viaggio, viag, viaggio. Buon viaggio, Arpe. Da. Before we go, a quick shout out to a pasta grammarian in action. Joseph made a batch of ajada. Ajada. Ajada which is the white pesto from Liguria that was one of the ancestors of basil pesto. Bravo, Joseph! If you try any of these recipes, tag us in a picture on Instagram or Facebook at Pastagrammer. We'd love to see what you come up with. Follow us while you're there and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. All right, guys, we'll see you soon from Italy. Ciao. Ciao. Do we have time in Rome to... To go and to search go. for pasta la pecorara. Yeah. See ya, but we have. You guys will know if we found it. Because by the time this video is posted, I'll have a picture of it. So if you don't see a picture popping up on your screen right now, it means I didn't find it.